a first and then we can go back and do some more review for tomorrow's uh, test. OK, uh, we're, we're basically moving into second semester AB topics now. Um, uh, eventually, we're going to talk about antiderivatives, um, but really um, uh, the connection from first semester or that the common thread with um, derivatives has been slope. And then the common thread here is going to be area. So area and slope are um, in a sense kind of inverse uh, relationships. And basically everything that we've done with derivatives, now we can undo that process, uh, kind of moving back up that chain. Um, so, but uh, let me first talk about um, this area concept, and then we'll dig it into into more of it um, after we get back from from break. So, you're going to see this term a lot, this area under a curve, but it really doesn't mean this. So, I want to talk about what this really means. Uh, area of the curve is really the area, the region between the function or the curve and the x axis. That's what it really means. It's whatever region that you see between the graph and the x axis. So for instance, if I want to find the area under the curve uh, for this first graph, it's really just between the x axis and so it could be below, depending on where the x-axis and where uh, the curve is. But then the second graph here, area under the curve is really, it's not under, it's really between this and the graph and the x-axis. So and then this third example, uh, sometimes it's above, sometimes it's below, because this curve kind of, oscillates up uh, above and below the x axis. So uh, the area between the curve and the x axis is just this region here. Now, um, sometimes uh, that region we can find using geometric uh, formulas, uh, especially if it fits into nice um, straight lines or nice geometric shapes. But if not, then we will need calculus and um, we'll get to the calculus uh, methods later. But uh, let's talk about some just important concepts first. Let's take a rate of change function and examine its graph. The area under the graph gives us the accumulation of change. So in other words, we're adding up this change. Over time. And what that also means is that your units will change. OK, your units will change. So let's say you're on a road trip and you have your car on cruise control for four hours. You travel at exactly 60 miles per hour uh, for the entirety of the trip. So how far have you traveled? Yeah. And notice that you just change your units, right? You travel 60 miles per hour, but if you travel for four hours, then 60 miles per hour multiplied by four hours. That's exactly what happens. Your units end up canceling out, and you're just left with miles. On the graphical perspective, let's say this um, y axis represents miles per hour. So 60 miles per hour, you're accumulating this rate, this change over a period of time. And when you accumulate, you're essentially involving area. So how far you've traveled is the accumulation of the rate of change. And area represents how far we've gone on that trip. Right. 
miles per hour times hour is not going to is not going to uh, stay at miles per hour. So the units for area under the curve, again, is not going to be the same as the starting units. The dependent unit is multiplied by the independent unit. In other words, the unit for the Y times the unit for the X. So anytime we talk about accumulation of change, you know areas involved and you know that your units will change. So this this um, these types of problems or um, understanding shows up a lot on uh, AP exams. So we're just kind of we're really just going to today looking at the area under the curve. A lot of these will be nice geometric shapes, and we're just going to be um, totaling up these areas, representing them in terms of the units that they're supposed to be represented in. Um, but um, um, this is kind of a bit of a like a like a nice uh, easy intro uh, before we get into the heavy stuff uh, next week. All right, so let's look at number two here. So the graph represents the rate at which water is leaking out of a tank, so gallons per minute. The units given in the graph um, is in terms of minutes and gallons per minute. How much water has leaked out of the tank after nine minutes? So if I want to, if I accumulate gallons per minute over the course of my time interval, then gallon per minute times minute will be gallons. And basically the area between the graph and the X axis will indicate how much water in terms of gallons have leaked out over that time period. So we have a nice uh, bunch of uh, geometric shapes that we see between the graph and the X axis. So I'm going to just break them down into, into you, can, you can do other, uh, designations if you want, but I just see nice three shapes that I can quickly um, because I'm not having to separate between these intervals here. I'm just going to add up all these regions here. So I see a big rectangle here. I see a triangle here and I see a semicircle here. So uh, let's do the easy ones first. The area of a rectangle is just base times height. What's the area of that region? Oh, yeah. 12, okay. All right, next up, I have a triangle here. This is a half of a rectangle, so one half of base times height. Three. Finally, I have a semicircle. My area of a circle is pi r squared, but the area of a semicircle is one half pi r squared. What's the radius of the semicircle? Two. Two. So if I want to find how much water has leaked out, I just add all this up. And my new units will be what? Gallons. Just gallons. Gallons per minute times minutes will just become gallons. OK, easy enough, but these are important skills for future FRQs that we're going to see. OK, we're just going to. Uh, I'll walk through three with you, and then I think the practice problems will just be good, good ones just for us to go through and. And then uh, should, it shouldn't should be too much uh, for us to do. Okay. Are we good this page? All right, particles moving along the X axis as at a rate followed by RMT shown in the table or in the graph below. So we have uh, times when this particle has a positive centimeters per second and also a negative 
centimeters per second. So what does that mean? Whenever it's above the uh, x or the t-axis, x-axis, what does that mean? This particle is moving to the right, and then negative would mean moving to the left. Yeah. So it says how far is the particle from the starting position after 10 seconds? So first, see if we can identify the region between the graph and the x-axis. Sometimes that um, alone is throwing students off because you may see different geometric shapes there, but you only care about what's between the graph and the x-axis. So if you're shading the wrong portions, then that's going to throw off all of your answers. So let's make sure. The hypothesis finding total distance. Um, for A, this is more like displacement because um, it, it's not asking how far the particle has traveled. It's just asking how far is the particle from the starting position. So we'll just have to add and subtract depending on um, where the area of the region is. So first, let's make sure we're shading in the correct spots here. We're looking at this triangle here. So if we find the area, because this is his speed, right? If we find the area, then we can figure out how far he's traveled to the right in this time interval. And then um, here's a easy shape that I can build here. I got a triangle there. I got a rectangle here. And I got a triangle here and then a triangle here. So that's everything that I'm looking for here. So if I find the area of this region, this will tell me how far he's traveled to the right because centimeters per second times seconds will be centimeters. So we're accumulating his rate of change over this time interval. And then this whole region here will tell us how far he's traveled to the left, right? To the left. And then we travel back to the right again. So we'll do positive, negative, positive and total that up and then whether we get a positive or a negative number and, and as our answer that will tell us how far he's he ends up um after 10 seconds or where he is from a starting point okay so just basically you're going to add up a bunch of um, triangles and rectangles together Oh, uh, careful about your uh, spacing here. This is by ones, but the y's are by what? Five. By fives, yeah. So the area of this triangle is going to be one half two times ten. So just be aware of that. The um, the unit unit designation is going to be a little bit different. Give that a try. I'll um, show my answers in a second. So the first 10 seconds here, um, I first traveled five, 10 centimeters to the right, then 22.5 centimeters to the left, 30 centimeters left, 7.5 centimeters left, and 10 centimeters to the right. Now you may decide that you want to build different shapes. That's fine. But triangles or rectangles, I think, are the easiest to, to see. So that negative 40 just means that um, this object is going to end up 40 centimeters to the left of where started.
and how far is the position from its position or how far is the particle from its position from two to eight. So then just treat two as a starting point and then just start moving in the direction that the graph tells you. So we're just building these nice prerequisite skills um, for future free response questions. Um, sometimes being able to understand that the area above and below represent different units and um, the area uh, involved in the problem is some sometimes the, the starting point for us to be able to answer um, the questions that FRQs are, are setting up us up to do. So. Uh, we're just building those skills. Okay, any questions with number three? All right, go ahead and try uh, the rest of the page and I'll just um, show the answers as you guys, after you guys try them. And then if you're, you're done with this page, before I go over it, you can always start on um, the practice um, derivative graph that I gave you. That'll be similar to what you see on the test tomorrow.
Okay, check number one, see if that makes sense to you. Yeah, just uh, number two, I just broke down our broke down these um, regions into manageable shapes that I can easily find a barrier for. After two minutes, uh, the particle uh, traveled 1.5 meters to the right. Let's look at that uh, region uh, between 1 and 0 and 2, and note that that area is sitting above the x-axis, so that means moving to the right. After six minutes, um, we just keep track of our positive and negative um, regions. So negative 4.5 minus pi is taking the same 4.5 plus pi meter to the left. And after 10 minutes, 9 plus 2 pi meters in the left.
All right, let's move to the derivative graph problem. Just additional review. Okay, so go ahead and create um, a slope and the concavity sign line. Once you have that, you can answer a lot of the, the, prob, uh, the questions that um, the problem is asking for. And then you're going to sketch your graph with some order pairs that's going to help anchor the graph. And then the range tells you, um, you know, after you sketch your graph, just make sure that your highest and lowest points are are within that, that range. Always just kind of pull and push on the graph so that it fits into that boundary. And then also be able to sketch your risk your F double prime graph as well. On the test, will the RE like graph be like exist like will the RE be scaled or like do I have to like back? Uh, yeah, you you can create your own okay. graph. Yeah. And then you can just scale it however way you want to, right? And if it's not uh if it's not accurate, it's okay. I just want to see that okay, my your lowest and highest points do match the range that's specified. Okay, keys on the back, but give you guys a chance to try it first.
Okay, make sure that you are writing out your kind of statements on the test. I will um, indicate that I'm looking for those justifications, those because statements for all the statements that you write. Um, I do want to point out something here is that uh, the pattern that I see is that um, students are good about writing out because statements for increase, decrease, um, concave up and concave down, but not so much with relative and relative max. So to make sure relative and relative max that you're also writing out because statements because that prime changing from negative positive, because that prime changing from positive negative, and then also point of flexion because F double time changes signs. So those are typically the ones that um, students don't include, but they do better with the increase decrease, but tend to leave blanks for relative and relative times. It's just that out. So having these arrows are really helpful because basically when you are done with your sketching your graph, it should follow exactly the direction of the arrow. Like that. So the graph is going to rise, flatten out, continue rising, hit a relative max, a negative one, decrease, hit a relative at three, and it's already increasing. Again. So if your graph doesn't match the slope behavior, um, something didn't go quite right. So it's a good way to kind of double check your your work, right? And, and the arrows are not going to match the derivative graph. The arrows are going to match the direction of your original graph that you're going to sketch. Yeah, I, I was looking at that. Um, yeah, just try your best with them. I, I, I'm some of the some of the things I may not have uh, covered yet until this next section. So, yeah, yeah, and I'll also put up the the key later this weekend. Sub interval, right? Uh -huh. OBG was one, like after. Right, right, right. Yeah, I'll make it do like next Friday or something.
off maybe the week after that. Okay, yeah, I'll give you the rookie brand. Did I show you? Yeah, and then. Yeah, everything I think you need to show so tomorrow's your test. Make sure you bring your calculator. I'll send out a reminder this afternoon to push it out. Help service tomorrow morning. I'll send out a Teams uh, link uh, in the morning as well if you want to join virtually. Um, I'm just going to be asking. I'm going to be asking questions. I'm not going to have another worksheet for you. So, uh, review through your um, your your test review packet. Your um, optimization problem will be a cost problem involving a box. So, if you know that process, then that's all you have to worry about. All right, perfect, folks. Uh, so you have your lowest point, say so the highest point matching your range for the final line. But my sister, you think they think not. She's Mr. Green's guy. My sister just called the skip thing. So just yeah, you're right. That's my better for now. Mr. Green's of the cross. I think it's relative. No, but it is. It's absolutely like it's like the fighters still red. But then, like, Jason is on the street. Well, with everything said and done, the graph needs to lead you to that. It needs to touch on that. Yeah, I see. So just make that graph drop down. We're going to make it fit that. Oh, okay. Exactly. Right. I told you, bro. I told you. 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 I
Well, maybe the justification for part A. No, I still wrote it. Okay, no, so I put that in state because of the rotation of how it's there. And then I labeled it as. For a while, that it means a lot more. No, I'm not getting from like yeah, that's not I don't know if I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I don't know if I'm yeah, but like, I mean, oh, this makes it like, I read theory. You never, like, wrote uh, I suggest you never started. I remember, I remember, okay, uh, what, no, I remember, like, this one, like, blue, oh, I thought, like, the game, yeah, but I just thought that the colors were, actually, I don't think that's what you thought, what color, I think, I think, I think, I think, the force is, 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 the